things that, that you'll need to have, not just for this course, but just in general, is you'll need to have a good study Bible. Now, this, this is a Bible, one of these I'm using. This is not a study Bible. There's no, there's no study notes. There's, it's just the text. This is a text-only Bible. And, and that's great, but for reading and understanding and interpreting, if you don't have all of the information and knowledge and background and word studies and all that kind of stuff in your head or on your library shelf, which I do so I can use this one here, then you're going to want something in your hand as you're reading and studying the Bible. And that's what a study Bible is. If, in the back of your book, if you turn to the back of the book, it should be page 49. Page 49 should be recommended study Bibles. Is that right? Okay. What I've given you here is, these are what I would recommend as, if you're looking for a study Bible, a study Bible incorporates the knowledge and the expertise and the background of all kinds of scholars and translators and, and theologians, and it puts it all in and around the margins of the pages of your Bible. The, the Bibles on page 49, these are all excellent. They're from a variety of translations. Uh, if you want a good study Bible in an NIV or New American Standard, you can grab the Life Application Bible. That's a great one. Um, the Zondervan's just released the, or Zondervan publishes the NIV Study Bible and the TNIV Study Bible, which they won't be publishing once they come out with their new NIV translation in 2011. Um, the ESV, et cetera, New Living. These are good study Bibles, and I have I, I have all of the, or most of the ones that I recommend. I have up here, so afterwards, if you want to come look at some, or you want to ask me, I'm looking to buy a study Bible. What would you recommend? Uh, the other thing is, if you look at page 40 or page 50, parallel Bibles. I had the question, some people said, well, should, do you mean that since I don't know Greek or Hebrew, I have to carry around three Bibles? And not necessarily, because parallel Bibles are really great in that they give you Bibles side by side, literally. And of all the parallel Bibles on the market, there's a number of them out there, of all different combinations, and depending on the publisher and what they have copyright access to and everything. But as far as the whole word-for-word, thought-for-thought, and base translation, the best one by far on the market is it's called Today's Parallel Bible. And it's got the NIV, which is a good base translation, and it's got the King James and the New American Standard, which are both good word-for-word -word translations, and then it's got the New Living Translation, which is a great thought-for-thought. -thought. Um, that is a fantastic thing to have on the shelf or at your home Bible study if you really want to get into it. Then I've given you on the middle of the page devotional Bibles, and, and hear this, devotional Bibles are not study Bibles, and they're not meant to be. Devotional Bibles are meant to not give you what does this text say and what does it mean. Devotional Bibles are meant to give you little nuggets of thought. How can you live this out? Or think about this. Or, and there are varying degrees of devotional Bibles as far as some good, some bad. The two that I think are as good as any out there, uh, one for men and one's for women, they're both in the, the TNIV translation, but I've given you those right there. And this has been popular, I've recommended to, to couples especially, to buy, you, you have your men's, you have your Strive Bible, and women, you have your true identity, and to do, read the Bible together as a couple. Read the same chapter, and then read each other's study notes and talk about it together. It's really, really great, and... A number of marriages have been enhanced that way, I hear. So, guys, women think it's very attractive when you study the Bible. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Look at the bottom of page 50, interlinear Bibles. Let me make a quick note about that. An interlinear Bible, when I said the closest you can get the original languages is having three or so and comparing them, that was almost true. An interlinear Bible is really the closest you can get <laughs> to the text without knowing the language, because what it does is it literally, and you'll see examples later in your workbook, it will give you the exact wording of the Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic. And then under each word, it will put a very literal, exact translation of that word. And so you can see how it got to what it got to. The problem is it doesn't, it reads like jumbled English, because Greek and Hebrew don't follow English word order. And so they, most interlinears put another translation out to the side so you can kind of make the leap. 
These are for Old Testament. I think the, the one by Paul Berger is, is as good as there is out there. And for the New Testament, the Greek, English, and the that I've given you is also excellent. Last thing I'll mention is on page 51. Non-recommended study Bibles. Now these are not, and I want to be really clear on this. It's not that any of the Bibles on this page should be thrown away or should be burned or they're going to lead you astray or anything like that necessarily. Amen. But a study Bible should be a Bible that incorporates the insights and the notes and the thinking of a wide range of scholars and experts. So for that reason, any Bible that is just giving you one author's perspective or one specific theological leaning is not a good study Bible for you to have if you want to understand this Bible broadly. I've given you a rule of thumb. If the Bible's got somebody's name on it, don't buy it. I mean, Bibles are not cheap. You're going to plunk down between 30 and 80 bucks for a good Bible. So you don't need a Bible and have a celebrity Christian endorsement. They're not, Charles Stanley, as great a guy as he is, is not going to give you any insight into the Bible that you're not going to find on the ones on the first page. In fact, they'll probably give you a lot watered-down version of some of that. And you're going to get his particular theology. Same thing with Beth Moore, T.D. Jakes, John MacArthur, any of those. Um, those are good money makers for publishers. Because if you go to, let's say you listen to John MacArthur on the radio, you're going to want his Bible. But it's, it's as, a, as a discipleship and an adult education aspect, they're not that great. And this even applies to our own, my own tradition of Methodism. For instance, the Wesley Study Bible. This just came out recently, the Wesley, Wesley and Study Bible. And it's got all kinds of notes and resources in it about Methodism and John Wesley and, and core terms that have been helpful in shaping Methodist theology. And if you want to do a course on Methodist theology or something like that, this is pretty good for that. But for, for background notes on the text and understanding what the Bible said, this isn't that great. So I, I love John Wesley. He's my, one of my Christian heroes, and I'm a proud Methodist, but I don't recommend the Wesley Study Bible as your study Bible. It's, it's something that you might want on the shelf, and it might be nice to look at occasionally, and it may be interesting, but as your base study Bible, I wouldn't recommend it. The other, on page 52, the last page, these are a couple of other ones. Um, there are some study Bibles that, and this is just something to be aware of, some study Bibles are put together by either um, non-Orthodox, in other words, Christians that hold a view that would say, well, the Bible is not really the inspired Word of God. It's just people's words about God. And it's good, but it's, it's not our authority. Uh, and, and there are Bibles that come from those perspectives. There are also Bibles that come from secular publishers that don't have any theological notes, but they have just history text notes. And so, while they may be useful for some things, they're probably not your best for a study Bible. And sometimes the study notes actually undermine what the text itself is teaching. You know, the text just flat out says, this is this, and then the study note will say, well, this is what they believed was that, but we know that this is not the case. So, those are just some to be aware of. Again, doesn't mean you've got to throw them away or burn them. Be aware. And the last one is the biggest money. Christians, we are suckers for anything with Jesus on it or anything that says Bible, we'll buy it. I mean, any, just go in a Christian bookstore and it's just filled with trinkets. And Bible publishing is not immune from that. Uh, there are a lot of gimmicky Bibles. The biggest one being the Rainbow Study Bible. It's marketed and it's, and it's, and it's you know, people have said, oh, this is a wonderful study Bible. But, um, but as a study Bible, no, it's, it's not at all. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a gimmick. So if you got it or if you have it, don't be ashamed or embarrassed, but just don't use that as your study Bible because it's not going to be helpful. Uh, and there's a description about that 